we're going to continue our conversation about trees by discussing how the general structure of a tree actually looks and discuss how we can implement this sort of structure inside of Python. So to start off with, we need to understand what the actual nodes are going to look like in this data structure because um, as you know so far with things like linked list and stacks, we would typically have a node that would have a value as well as possibly a pointer to the next thing inside of that data structure, right? With trees, things are gonna be a little bit more different. And for the purpose of this video and the future videos, I'm gonna focus on trees that are binary, which means that they have two links instead of just one. So whereas in a list, we would have only one link to the next thing inside of the list, a tree is gonna have two links to two different things inside of the list. And from there, we'll continue to build the structure. Um, so each of those will have links to two, and then those will have links to two, and you'll end up with a big tree with links in all sorts of different directions. So to illustrate that, let's go ahead and take a look at what a tree structure actually looks like. A tree structure is going to have a root value, sort of like the top of a stack or the front of a list. This is the point that we start at. The key distinguishing feature of the root is that nothing links to it, right? It is the starting point. Um, and from this root, we could have a link to one node. So let's just say there's a node here, or we could have a link to two nodes. And we refer to these links as the left and the right. So we have a left, we have a right, and we have a value. Those are the three pieces of this tree node that we're gonna be implementing is that as a pointer to the left-hand side, a pointer to the right-hand side, and it has a root value. Now, to discuss a little bit about like, why do we care about trees and maybe get a bit of it more of an intuition behind where trees used, um, let's discuss a few applications of this just to get a few like practical examples. The best practical example that I can usually talk about is a file structure. So assume that you're on like a Windows computer, right? On a Windows computer, you have your C drive usually. And inside of that C drive will have some, some directories that exist. And inside of those directories, we'll have um, more directories that might exist as well, right? So we have more directories and you can see that this essentially creates that sort of tree structure. As we expand, we sort of go further down into the directory structure. We end up um, unveiling more and more items that may have more items contained within them. That's the sort of structure that's typically um, like an example of a tree is um, values that in turn may contain other values, or it's not necessarily always that there are other storage techniques that involve trees that we'll talk about as well. well. One thing I'll note about the file directory example here is that in your file system, of course, it's not necessarily a binary tree, right? A file system could have multiple different children. So there could be maybe three directories inside of the C drive, right? And maybe one of these has like you know, four directories, right? So it's a slightly different structure than the binary one that we're gonna be focusing on. Just for simplicity's sake, we typically think of um, just one with like a left and right rather than having a whole bunch of nodes because that just complicates things. It's a lot harder to learn that. Once you master the binary, then you can move on to sort of expand that further. So the one other example that I wanna show you is the one that we're mainly gonna focus on, which is actually called a binary search tree. In a binary search tree, we have that same sort of structure with a root and a left and right node. And essentially the idea is that everything to the left of the tree is less than the root and everything to the right of the tree is bigger than the root. And using this structure, we can actually search trees very fast. So let me give you an example. Suppose that we have a tree and its root is 10. We could have a value to the left of the tree, which would be less than it. So say maybe something like five. And then we'd have something to the right of this root, which would be greater than it. So say maybe like 13, for instance. And then this pattern will sort of continue. So everything to the left of five is gonna be less than it. So I don't know, we could have a number like two to the left of it, right? And then everything to the right of five is gonna be greater than it. So we could have maybe seven. So the key thing to sort of keep in mind here is that everything to the left of 10 is less than it, right? So five, seven, and two are all less than 10. Um, and then furthermore, everything to the right of five is greater than it, and everything to the left of five is less than it. So you can see that that property is satisfied at every single point in the tree, not just at a single point. And a similar sort of idea with 13, for instance. So things that are greater than 13 are gonna be maybe, I don't know, like a number like 17, for instance, 
uh, and then something less could be something like 11. Because remember, it has to be greater than 10, but less than 13. So this is the general idea of a binary search tree. Now, the reason why this is nice is because suppose you wanted to look for the number two. All you have to do is you have to look at 10 and say, well, it's less than 10. And then you come to five and say, well, it's less than five and you end up at two. You can see it only takes three operations to get to that value. If we had a list of values, it could take at most the size of the list in terms of operations to find that value. So it's faster to search in this sort of like tree structure than it is to search in a list type structure. So now that you understand that, we'll just discuss a little bit about implementing our tree node. Now, I'm not going to like really run through the whole thing um, because you already are familiar with the idea of a node. And really, the concept is all the same. Uh, it's just that we're going to add two links instead of just one. So let me quickly show you what that's going to look like. We're going to create a tree node. And I'm going to have a class called tree node. So that's what we'll name our class. And inside of here, we'll have our initialization, which I'll take in a value similar to the node, right? With the node, we would take in next, but with this, we're going to take in left and right, right? We're going to have a link to the left and a link to the right. So then we'll have like self.value equals value, uh, self.left equals left, and then self.right equals right. And then from here, we can simply just define our getters and setters for each of these properties. And that's really all that's involved with a node. So you would have like get value, right? And get value would return um, self.value. And then you would have say set value, which would take in a value, right? And then we would set the value property to be equal to what was given. So this is all the, the exact same as the node, right? The main thing that differs is that we have our left property and our right property. So typically I would just like duplicate these um, a few times. If you're using PyCharm and you wanna know like the shortcut that I'm using there, it's control D. If you just highlight everything and press control D, it will uh, duplicate it for you, right? So instead of doing get value, you could say something like get left, which would return the left. And then you could have like set left, which you would give it a value for left. And then we could say, um, self.left equals left, right? And then we could have get right, of course, which would return self.right. And then we can have set right, which would take in a right value and it would set it, right? And this is all the operations that are involved with the tree node. So as you can see, it's very, very similar to an actual node. Um, the main difference is that we have a left and right pointer rather than just having a single next pointer. So. In the next few videos, we'll take a look at how we can implement operations in trees. So we'll actually take a look at how like the insert and delete methods look. We'll take a look at how we can traverse trees and get an understanding of that. This idea is going to apply the tree node as well as recursion. So you want to make sure that you have a good solid understanding of those two concepts before moving on to the, uh, the binary search trees and trees in general. Having an understanding of the way that the tree structure looks is going to be helpful, but I'm going to reiterate that um, many times because as we practice and get an understanding of the methods, we're going to have to redo these trees and um, you know try some examples. So um, you'll get familiar with that as you continue on through the videos, but um, just understanding the general concepts of it is very important. Now, one final thing that I will note here is I want to sort of mention that trees is actually not a concept from computer science necessarily. It actually comes from discrete math and mathematics. So um, again, I like to point out the links between computer science and math because computer science is just applied math. This is one instance where we're applying math. A tree is a special type of graph. And if you've taken some math courses, you may be familiar with the concepts of graphs and trees already. So if you are familiar with trees from mathematics, this is the same sort of tree that we're implementing here. So it's got all the same properties and all of that sort of thing. Um, if you're not familiar with trees and graphs, it will be something that you will become familiar with as you continue to study computer science, especially um, in courses like algorithms and computer networks, graphs and trees will probably come up quite frequently. So you'll, you'll get an idea of those from a mathematical sense as well. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of the ideas of trees as well as the tree node. And from here, we'll take a look at how we can apply these into our binary search trees.